Hey guys, it's Hannah, and today I'm going to be reacting to your assumptions about me. I've seen pretty much everyone doing this video. It's extremely popular right now and a huge trend, and I wanted to be cool too, so I'm also doing it. So I went on my Instagram and used the ask feature to have you guys submit some of your assumptions, and today I'm just gonna read through them and let you know if any of them are true. And I thought this would also be a good video to do right now since I feel like it's been a really long time since I've done like a Q&A or anything, and there are a lot more of you here now since the last time I've done one, and I feel like a lot of you don't actually know that much about me, so this should be fun and hopefully a little bit informative. <laughs> you can be very dramatic. This is absolutely true. I am very dramatic. <laughs> it's not that I really like drama, I actually hate drama, but I am very like over dramatic. So, for example, when I am sick, I'm probably the most annoying person on the entire face of the earth. Like, I could just have like a simple cold, and other people will be able to like go about their day and like feel terrible, but still be able to like get something done. I can't get anything done like I will just lay around in my bed all day as if like my life is over and I can't move I don't want to talk to anyone any of my family members can tell you like I am so dramatic when I am sick but even apart from that in my like day-to-day -day life I am also still a pretty dramatic person part of it also probably comes from the fact that I did drama growing up like all through high school I was super into theater and I think that makes you more dramatic and I think you're also drawn to it when you tend to be a more dramatic person. But yeah, I think when it comes down to things that matter, I'm pretty sensible. But in other cases, I can be a pretty big drama queen. <laughs> You're the mom friend in your friend group. I actually got this one several times um, and I find it really funny because it's very true. The only time I'm not the mom friend in my friend group is when there's another more dominant mom friend in the friend group. It's kind of just like the position I step up to when no one else in the group is really that type of person. It's not something that I feel like I naturally gravitate towards. I'm just willing to do it if no one else is really going to be that person in the group. And with most of my friend groups, it tends to be that I end up being that one. But yeah, you could definitely say I am usually the mom friend. You don't like to put makeup on, but you like the result. This is actually very, very true. I really only wear makeup in my videos and when I go to events and stuff, mostly like if I'm taking pictures or something like that because I feel like my face looks a lot better on camera when I have makeup on because it defines your features. It's kind of the point of makeup. So I'll do it for things like that, but I really don't wear it day to day at all. Occasionally I'll put on like lipstick and mascara, but like that's pretty much it. But yeah, I really don't like putting it on. That's part of the reason reason that I don't wear makeup. I do sometimes like to put it on for like helping me with my anxiety. It's definitely soothing for me to do it because I just like having something to do. Uh, but if it's like a requirement or <laughs> um, if it's like work, if it feels like work to me, then I don't like doing it. But that's pretty much true with everything I do. <laughs> I do like the result though. I feel like when I put makeup on, it kind of actually motivates me to go about my day more. So it can be helpful in that sense sometimes. You were voted most likely to succeed in high school. I was not voted most likely to succeed. I was, however, voted best eyebrows, and I created that category just so I could win it. <laughs> so next up, I got a bunch of different variations of you're shy or you're introverted, both of which I actually think are two different things, but most people were saying that I'm actually far more shy in person than I am in my videos or more introverted, even though I've said I'm an extrovert. And that's not true at all. I am very much an extroverted person. I'm more of an ambivert than I am an extrovert or an introvert, but definitely an ambivert leaning towards extrovert. I'm definitely someone who gets my energy from being around people. I of course need my time alone, like I cannot survive without my time alone. I need it for sure but I don't like being alone. Like I absolutely hate being alone. I feel so isolated. I feel like I can't get anything done and I just feel really drained. And obviously hanging out with people for far too long can make me feel drained as well, but it also gives me my energy back. So that's why I say I'm more in the middle than I am one or the other, but I'm definitely more leaning towards an extrovert because I do not like to be alone. <laughs> Is it weird to say that I think you love hugs? <laughs> I don't think that's weird to say at all. And it's very, very true. I love hugs. Like, I have friends who don't really like physical contact very much, which I totally understand, but it just like makes me sad sometimes because all I want to do is hug people all the time. This is gonna sound kind of odd, but I'm a very physical person, so I really like holding someone's hand or like touching their arm or like cuddling with someone or giving someone a hug, so I think that's why I'm very much like a huggy person. There's just something about having like physical contact with somebody that just makes me feel very grounded 
grounded. And I think that's part of the reason why I like being around people as well. I just like having other people's presence around me, but also physically like being with someone and being able to like reach out and touch them is an important thing for me. This got really weird. It's not meant to be weird, but yes, to answer the question, I love hugs. If you ever meet me, I will always ask if I can hug you first before I do, of course, um, but you're free to hug me for sure. <laughs> you're a guarded person. I am not. I am not guarded at all. I'm an open book to the point where it's kind of a problem. Like pretty much anyone in my life will know everything about my life and I don't really hide anything about myself from people. If I become friends with someone, like I could just have spoken to them twice and by the third time, like they will know my entire life story because I don't hold anything back. I overshare far too much. It's really a problem because now there are like too many people who know too much about me. And I mean, I know I volunteer the information, but still, <laughs> I can't even really think of an instance in which I'm very guarded. Maybe if someone's like hurt me or something like that, but even then, not really. You didn't like your curly hair when you were younger. It's both true and not true because actually for a time, my hair was pretty straight. Like it wasn't straight straight, but it was wavy. It was not this curly. My hair was this curly, but it had like a different curl pattern when I was like really little. Like from the time that I was like one to maybe like five years old, my hair had like ringlets, like just full on ringlets. And then it got straight, like straight wavy mostly. But then as I got like a bit older, I wanna say middle school, to early high school, I would just brush my hair out all the time and I would just wear it up in a bun because I didn't want to deal with it. And at that point it was trying to get back to like this curliness, um, but I didn't like it at all. And I just wanted my hair to be straight. I would straighten it a lot um, if I had the time or energy because straightening my hair took literally like three hours. But bottom line, I didn't like it. I didn't like the curly hair until it was, I think my senior or junior year of high school, I don't remember. One day I just like wore it natural and I kind of just accepted that this is like what it looks like and eventually after that um, I just started wearing it natural all the time. I would just let it dry naturally. I wouldn't add heat to it. I wouldn't just keep putting it up in a bun all the time and it just turned into this again. So I'm actually now very happy with my hair. I love my hair. I like having curly hair a lot and I'm glad that I've come to a place with it where I am happy with it and comfortable with it and I feel like if I didn't have my curly hair I'd lose part of my identity which probably isn't good like I shouldn't be that attached to just hair but I am. <laughs> you were popular in high school. I was not popular in high school. Some of my friends and family will actually like contest this point and say that I was popular because I had a lot of friends. I definitely had a lot of friends in high school but we were not the popular kids. My high school was very small and I would say that it was separated into kind of two main groups. We dealt with a lot of like popular not popular stuff in middle school and by the time we got to high school popular and unpopular existed but it was more separated by these are the AP honors students and these are the non-AP non-honors students. And the AP honors students naturally tended mostly to be the unpopular people and the non-AP honors students tended to be the popular kids. And I was part of the AP honors students and I was in a subgroup of that group <laughs> where we had like a lot of friends but we were not cool. Like we were the theater kids. So from that you can guess that we were not very popular amongst like the football players or the cheerleaders leaders or like anyone who played sports because none of us really did. But within that group of friends that I had, like there were a lot of us and I would say within that group I was pretty popular. But in terms of like conventional popularity, no, I was not popular. Okay, so I do want to clarify that I was actually prom queen my senior year of high school and that's only because my best friend and I ran together and we won prom queen and king because the other couples were like actual couples and we were just best friends and we kind of wanted to like run for the underdogs, like for the nerdy kids. And we ended up winning because we were the only people who like truly campaigned, essentially just meaning that we went on Instagram and asked people to vote for us when they went to prom. And that was pretty much it. That's how we won. So I guess you could say I was like kind of popular by the end of senior year, but like it wasn't the same type of popularity. But we definitely weren't cool. Like we were not cool, very far from it. You're good at singing. I sang for a very, very long time. Um, I wanna say since like the fourth grade I'd been singing uh, and then I stopped after a little bit in high school. But I loved singing. I was in my school choir from fourth grade until my freshman year because we didn't have a choir anymore in high school. And I loved it. Like I wanted to be a professional singer. I did. 
did honor choir and I won awards and it was a huge part of my life. And then eventually in high school, like I said, we didn't have choir anymore until like a little bit later and I didn't end up joining for a number of reasons, but I just kind of stopped singing except for just on my own. And honestly, like I never really believed that I was good. I just knew I really loved it and I wanted to do it for the rest of my life. But at this point, it's just been years since I have sung and I have lost so much of my range. I used to be a soprano. I cannot be a soprano anymore. I feel like I could probably get back up there, but I would have to like work at it a lot. And yeah, I've just essentially lost a lot of the skill that I used to have and it makes me sad and I do kind of want to work on singing again because I really miss it and it was like a huge part of my identity honestly. But yeah, who knows, maybe one day I'll get back to it. But yes, your assumption was correct. Well, you said I'm good. I don't know. I can't judge if I'm good. I love it though. <laughs> Next, I got a lot of people assuming that I'm very religious and then a few people assuming that I'm an atheist. And I don't think I've actually ever explicitly talked about this in a video before or I don't think I've actually talked about it anywhere really. But I I am actually an atheist. I am not at all religious. I wasn't raised religious. None of my family is religious. But yeah, I feel like I get the assumption from a lot of people that I'm religious and I don't really know why exactly. Not that it's a bad thing at all. I just am curious to know why people think that. But a couple of you did actually assume correctly and one of them specifically said you're an open-minded atheist and I really appreciated that because I would like to consider myself an open-minded atheist. You swing between thinking you're kind and good enough and worrying you're selfish. This one kind of just came from my entire existence. <laughs> but yes, this is a very accurate assumption about me. I constantly grapple with the idea that I am someone who is kind, but then I also always think that I'm being too selfish or self-centered. Um, and the whole good enough part of it, I never really think I'm good enough for anything, but it's something that I'm like trying to work on because it's something I need to be working on. Having a good sense of your identity and who you are as a person, I think is something that everyone struggles with that pretty much any point in their lives. And I feel like right now is one of those big like periods for me where I've really been struggling with who I am and the type of person I want to be and if I'm there yet or if I'm working towards it. And all I can really say is that I'm constantly working on it. I like to think of myself as a kind person, but I don't feel like I am every day. And I think that's also okay. I think it's okay to be selfish sometimes as long as you recognize that that's something that you're doing or a trait that you have. You can sing basically any panic song you hear. This is very very true. I have pretty much almost all of their songs memorized. There are just a couple from Pretty Odd that I don't really know that well because I never listened to that album too much. And then Vices and Virtues, I think, has a couple that I haven't listened to that much. But if you give me pretty much any song from Too Weird to Live, Too Rare to Die, A Fever You Can't Sweat Out, Death of a Bachelor, Pray for the Wicked, like I will pretty much know all the lyrics. I'm obsessed with panic. <laughs> Sometimes you get really annoyed with people you don't know that well, but you will never show it. This is both true and untrue because I get very annoyed with people that I don't know that well, and I do show it, just not to them. <laughs> Unless they do something where like, I'll call them out. But if it's just like something that annoys me that probably really shouldn't annoy me, uh, but it just does anyway, I will definitely talk about it with like my friends or something like that. Like I have to rant about everything. Like this goes back to me being dramatic and not guarded at all. Like I'm very dramatic someone can do something very simple that doesn't even directly affect me, but I will just get annoyed about it and I'll have to talk about it because I'm not guarded at all. You want a kid soon. This is absolutely untrue. I have no desire to have children. I have never wanted children. I don't think I will ever want children. I have always said that if I want kids, I will adopt kids because the idea of being pregnant horrifies me. Like I know some people think of it as like one of the best things you could possibly be. I cannot even like think about it for more than a couple of seconds without just, I, I just can't. <laughs> so yeah, if at any point in my life I do decide that I want kids, adoption is absolutely the way I'm going to go, but I don't even foresee that happening. I have had so many people tell me I'm going to change my mind and I swear people are going to comment that I'm going to change my mind here as well because People just like to do that apparently, but I'm not going to change my mind. I do not want kids. I never want kids. Also, like it could never happen soon anyway, even if I wanted them because like your girl hasn't dated anyone in 
ever. <laughs> you only have a few friends because of reading and booktube. This is definitely not true. <laughs> I have so many friends just from booktube and reading alone. I'm so grateful that I have so many people that I have met just from this experience that I know from like all over the world now, all over the country. But even outside of booktube, like I have always had a lot of friends. I've never been the type of person who only has like one or two friends. And I have had my friends from elementary school that are still my best friends in the entire world. Like 10 plus years later. I think we're pushing 15 now. Oh my god. <laughs> but yeah, I've had like my core group of friends since then and they're still my best friends and then I have so many other friends. So I'm so, so grateful and lucky for all the incredible people that I get to have around me. I know a lot of people don't have that and I know how life-changing it can be to have those people around you, like those good, good people. And I'm so lucky. It's one of the biggest things I value in my life, my friendships. You're snarky, but people don't always notice since you're also nice. That's very true. <laughs> I feel like people don't actually recognize how snarky and sarcastic I can be because everyone just has this assumption that I'm just very nice and kind and totally non-judgmental. I am most of those things most of the time, but I'm also like very snarky and I feel like no one really sees it that much. But yeah, that's just totally spot on and I feel like it just doesn't come across as much in my videos. It does sometimes in my vlogs. I feel like you can definitely see it more in those videos or any videos that are like this where I just kind of like sit and talk some more. But yeah, I feel like that's why a lot of people also assume that I'm a Hufflepuff. Not that Hufflepuffs can't be like snarky or anything, but a lot of people have that assumption too. I got that one several times too, that I'm a Hufflepuff. I am not a Hufflepuff. Every Hufflepuff I know is not not as sarcastic as I am. But yeah, that's just like completely spot on. So I had to include it in here because I found it really funny. <laughs> You've questioned your sexuality. The answer to this question is yes. Um, and that's all I really wanna say about it. So you're a perfectionist. I am absolutely a perfectionist. I'm the type of perfectionist that if something isn't done the way that I deem perfect, like if I can't do it how I think it should be or perfectly in my mind, I just won't do it at all. So there are some perfectionists that they will like not stop working until something is completely perfect the way that they need it to be. I am not that type of perfectionist. I will instantly give up if I think that I can't make it what it needs to be, which is horrible. It's a really, really bad trait that I have and something that I'm definitely trying to improve upon. One example of this is when I first took physics in high school. It was the first class I'd ever taken that did not come naturally to me. I didn't understand it. It frustrated me so much. So I literally just did not try in physics at all still managed to get an A because I was that student, but I just hated it so much because I couldn't understand it and I didn't want to work to understand it because I couldn't get it like instantly. And that's how my perfectionism comes out. Like if I can't get it instantly, then it feels like I'm going to have to fail at it and I don't like failing. So I just won't do it at all. But failure is part of the process of anything that you do. So you have to allow yourself to fail in order to grow. And that's what I'm working on a lot right now. Um, but yeah, this just turned into a therapy session. Moving on. <laughs> you have a boyfriend. I do not. Applications are open though down below, so. <laughs> You feel emotions more intensely than others. I can't say if this is necessarily true or not because I can't really gauge other people's emotions because I'm not in their head. Based on like the people I know, the people I've had around me in my life, I feel like it's kind of true. I am an extremely emotional person. I'm what's called a super feeler. If you wanna look it up, you can look it up, but I've met other super feelers and they like understand this feeling as well. Like I walk into a room and I can like gauge everyone's feelings in the room. Like I can read a room really well in terms of people's emotions and my own as well. Like I'm very hyper aware of them all the time. And that can be really, really overwhelming. Like when you feel so much all the time. Sometimes you just don't want to feel anything at all. Um, and again, I'm going too in depth with these answers, but uh, yeah, I'm a very intensely emotional person and I feel everything to the extreme. You're a big softy until someone messes with your friends. Absolutely true. I'm not an angry person. Like I never really get very angry. There are very few things that can actually set me off and somebody hurting my friends is absolutely one of them. Like you can be mean to me, I honestly, I don't care. Like I will call you out. Sometimes I won't call you out, depends on the situation. But like the instant someone is mean to my friends, done, like completely done. I have cut so many people off because they were terrible to my friends. Like, 
a huge like feud of my entire high school, middle school career was just me cutting somebody out of my life because they were terrible to my friends. I don't stand for it like at all. Like I said, friendship is one of my biggest values. And if anybody messes with my friends, you're done to me. But there you all have it. That is it for me reacting to your assumptions about me. I honestly had a really fun time with this video. I feel like there were a lot of assumptions there that I kind of like wanted to go more in depth with, but I also didn't want to make this video like a therapy session. But maybe if you guys are interested in the future, I'll do like a, I don't know, chit chatty kind of video where I just like sit down and talk about some experiences or something. I don't know. I've been kind of wanting to experiment with like doing some different types of videos and just more like talking with you guys um, because I like doing that. So maybe that's something I'll do in the future. If you have any ideas for it, let me know in the comments down below. But I had a really, really good time with this video. Like I said, I really appreciate all of you for submitting your assumptions about me. So thank you so, so much. I feel like it was a good mix of you guys being really, really spot on with some of these assumptions and then also totally off with some other ones. But it was really interesting just to see what you guys think about me because I don't really get to know that unless you tell me. So this was actually really fun. But that is it for this video. If you would like to follow me on any of my social media, all my links are in the description box as always. But thank you all so much for watching this video. Thank you for being you and I will see you in my next video. Bye!